Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona in partnership with Photo Forum once again. And you are watching another great episode of Garage Talk. So let's get on it. Now today, my friends, we're gonna go ahead and do a button, okay, tour of the Canon R8, their entry-level full-frame mirrorless camera for their R-mount system. Now, we've already done the review, which is gonna be a card up there, okay? And we also did the full menu walkthrough for photo and video. Thank everybody who watched that, <laughs> okay? It was long, but you know, and that card's gonna be up there as well in case you missed it. Now today we're gonna go through the buttons. I understand sometimes it's first camera, can be a little daunting, all the dials, buttons, ah, what do they do, you know? Holy smokes, we're about to show you, okay? And depending on what mode you're in will affect some of the functionality of these buttons, but for the most part, it's gonna be universal, okay, through whatever mode you're in. And as you get better, you can customize these buttons to do what you want it to do to suit your needs as a photographer, which is really great. All systems have that now. Sony, Nikon, Canon, Fuji, uh, Panasonic, Olympus. You can customize buttons till the cows come home. So instead of me flapping my jaws anymore, why don't we just dive in and get started? And I remind you guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. It's an interactive channel and I'll be sure to answer all those for you. So I got the top down, so let's get started. Oh, let me put my glasses on too. <clears throat> Like I said, this is the Canon R8. This is entry level full frame. We have a 24 to 50 on the focal length. Now, basically, this when we refer to focal length, this is a mid range zoom, a um, little less than what a standard mid range zoom was. If this was a standard mid range zoom, this would be a 24 to 70. But this means you can start out at a base of 24 millimeters and you can zoom in to 50 millimeters. So it gives you a little wide angle, and then we come into that nifty 50. Now, if we turn this camera to the size for this particular lens, we notice that we have a couple of switches. We have an autofocus, a manual focus, and a control selector. Now, if we click this to the control selector, we are now able to control some of the focusing um, apparatuses through menu settings that we've already set, all right, inside the camera using some of the wheels, okay, here for manual focus, autofocus, some of those items. Or we can go ahead and click to manual focus and now it's in full manual focus here on the control ring right here. So if we switch it to this, or control ring or dial, depending on how we've set up the menu, okay? Or this, and then we're just manual focus and we're just using the control ring to focus. But again, in that menu setting, um, tutorial that I did, um, you can actually customize this control ring on how you want it to manual focus. So watch that video. I encourage you for sure so you can learn all about that. And then here we have our stabilization, okay? Really simple, on or off, okay? We should always have that on. Now, in the case that you're on a tripod, a lot of people say turn that stabilization off, okay? It's up to you. I haven't necessarily seen a difference in all my years of photography with stabilization being on or off on a tripod. But you have a lot of people tell you to turn it off if you're gonna put it on a tripod. Okay, I'm just gonna shrug my shoulders and say, you do you, all right? That's a personal preference thing, in my opinion. So, no right or wrong answer here. So, as we come around from the lens, we're gonna go ahead and come to the side. So, we, under the first flap, this is where our remote would go, okay? If you're choosing to use a wired remote. Nothing wrong with using a wired remote in 2023, but in 2023, we have the option to either go wireless with a remote, and I wanna say that's like the BCM11 or something like that. I'll have a little chingadera somewhere over here so you know exactly what Canon remote to use if you were to go that way. Or you can use the phone app, and the Canon imaging phone app, well, you can use as a wireless remote as well. People have their preference, guys. I got people like, nope, I don't wanna use my phone for any of it. I'm either gonna plug it in or I'm gonna use a wireless one. People are like, yep, I wanna use my phone because I wanna share and I wanna have the timer and all that good stuff. Again, you do you on that one. Underneath this other flap right here, we are gonna have a couple ports. Our top one is gonna be for an external microphone. Okay, if you're recording video, I strongly suggest that you use an external microphone. Shotgun microphone, lav microphone, wireless lav microphone, it's all gonna plug in here. And then we have a headphone jack here down on the bottom. Now this is gonna allow us to put headphones in here and regular old basic headphones will work. And this is gonna allow you to monitor that audio. So as you're talking 
or your talent, which I guess if you're a vlog, you're the talent, or your talent, the person you're interviewing is talking, you can hear exactly what that audio sounds like. If it's clipping, if it's too low, you can make any adjustments you need to there. And then underneath the second cover, we have the USB-C, okay? We can do power delivery over USB-C. We can use this as a mass storage device, so we can take our images from our SD card, put them on our computer through the USB-C cable, and we can also use this as a camera if we're going to do uh, Skype or Zoom or you know something along those lines, any type of teleconferencing. And then we have our micro HDMI cable to full-size HDMI, okay? We can plug that into a capture card on the computer and record. We can plug this into an external monitor, such as a port keys or an Atomos monitor. So this has a lot of versatility as well. And this being a micro uh, HDMI is standard issue. For a camera at this price level, um, it's what we expect. Although some Canon cameras are still using micro HDMI, and I don't understand, uh, as a Sony user, Third gen Sony's, pretty much everything is full-size HDMI right now. Um, it's just the way it is. Uh, I think the exception to 6700 and like the ZV-E10 or something like that. But regardless, it still works, okay? We can record 4K from HDMI, 1080 from HDMI. It's still very versatile and useful as far as that goes. So now, if we come to the bottom of the camera, all right, on your camera, this is gonna be uh, your serial number information. We're gonna see the battery door. We're gonna open that up. We're gonna have our SD card slot, okay? I believe this is a type two slot. If I'm wrong, it's gonna say right here that I was wrong <laughs> and tell you that it's type one, but I'm pretty sure this is type two. And then we're gonna have our Canon battery, all right? And I wanna say this is the uh, 17, the EL17? Uh, yeah, LP17. I said EL, it's LPE17. I just called the LP17. So I'm gonna put that right back in there. We're gonna close that door. Um, <clears throat> as far as that goes. So really easy as far, all right. Now we're gonna turn this over. We have our M function, which you can customize. We have our front dial here, which you can choose. Now this front dial here, we can choose this to be our uh, shutter speed, okay? Or our aperture value, all right? And we're gonna customize that in the menu setting, just like this button right here, or this dial right here, you can see it's very well gnarled on the side, got great tactile, all right, sensation right there. We can customize this uh, to be as well. So some people like this front one as their aperture, some people like this rear one as their aperture. No right or wrong answer on that one, my friends, okay? You do you when you're customizing your camera, okay? We have our off and on, and if we turn it to lock, it's going to be locked out. And the camera, as you could say, set the lens to shooting position. This is shooting position. And then the back screen opens up, but I can't do anything, okay, because I have it in lock mode, all right? So when I go to on, everything's unlocked. And I currently have it in manual focus. Let me turn it back to autofocus there. So that's what we have right here. We have off, lock, and on. <clears throat> we have our record button. This is gonna be for video only. Now, in the menu system, you can change the shutter button to be record also while you're in video mode. I urge you not to do this, okay? Leave this for photos, and leave this for photos, and leave this for your video recording. Um, and real quick, this is going to be, hopefully you guys can see that up there, this is going to be an autofocus assist. Um, you'll see that option down in the menu system as well too. Uh, the autofocus beam is what they refer to it as. Now, coming over here, we are looking at our dial. Now, typically, and let's talk about this really quick too. This little thing right here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you guys will be able to see that. This is what we call a witness mark. Here is where your sensor lies, okay? So, if back in the day this was taken back from film, movies, like crank movies, as far as back in the day, you would measure from the witness mark to where the talent was standing, and this is how you accurately gauge distance to calculate your depth of field. All right, so it's still a carryover. Here's your witness mark, which I think is pretty cool. So let's talk about the dial as we're moving over. Now, typically we refer to this as a PASM dial, and it's typically set at 
Intelligent Auto, okay? So we're just going to select OK on that. Now, if you have it on this mode, okay, <clears throat> the camera is taking pretty much all control. This is turned into a large point-and-shoot camera, and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? It's going to adjust your exposure, it's going to adjust creative style, it's going to adjust um, your aperture value, your shutter speed value. Again, it turns into a point-and-shoot uh, point camera. Now, if you're just starting, um, as far as that goes, uh, out, um, if you're just starting out, a lot of people will default to this. The problem is a lot of people don't come off of this mode, okay? And we want to see you progress as far as that goes. Um, but it's a place to start. So FV is going to be flexible priority uh, auto exposure. So um, you can set it uh, automatically or it'll automatically set or you can override that and you can go ahead and choose. So this is going to kind of be the next step in working towards getting to using like manual or when we talk about Canon, it's time value and aperture value, not shutter and aperture. Um, moving towards on that program mode, okay, is going to be uh, shutter speed and aperture are set automatically, but now you have control of some other functionality of the camera. Um, again, we're working towards getting to some of these modes where you have full control or, you know, more control than what you would have in program or the auto AI intelligent mode. Auto Plus mode is what some people refer to it as as well. Um, so from here, from program, we're going to go to TV. Now this stands for time value. Canon uses time value. Sony, for example, it's a PASM, which we refer to it as a PASM dial, whatever, but you are all the time, but we see a PASM, program, aperture, shutter, manual, PASM for short. Um, but Canon has a TV because, and at the end of the day, it really is a time value. This is shutter priority. So in this mode, you are going to choose what you want your shutter speed to be, whether that be 1 60th, 1 1 20th, 1 2,000th of a second. And then the camera is going to adjust your aperture for you, all right? Opening it up or closing it down. Now, in any of these modes, TV, AV, or manual, and for manual, you can choose your ISO or you can choose auto ISO and so the camera will now take control of the ISO and from a range that you have programmed in there, it's going to either be at the base of 100 or let's say the max is 6400. Now this camera can go much higher than 6400 ISO, I'm just using these numbers as example. But in TV or shutter priority, you are in charge primarily of the shutter speed. AV is aperture priority. So here, you are going to set your aperture. And on a lens like this, we have a variable aperture. And I can't remember what the variable is. Let's see here. We've got a 4.5 to 6.3. Standard issue for a kit lens as far as that goes. So you don't have much choice on what you're going to choose there. You're either at 4.5 or f16 or f22 is where this lens tops out. To where if you had, say, like a, an f14 prime or a 2.8 zoom, you can have two weight throughout the focal range on a zoom or adjust that um, aperture from 1.4 to f22 on your prime lens. And you just, again, you have more control over it. The, the lens isn't telling you what aperture, hey, sorry, I know you want to go wider, but we're not going to let you because we're tapped out because of the, the quality level of the lens. Um, so yeah, so aperture priority, you're going to choose your aperture. The camera will choose the shutter speed. And again, if you have an auto ISO, it will choose your ISO, or you can turn it into, you know, pick your own ISO manually, and it will um, then just adjust the shutter speed according to those two uh, variables that you've already inputted. Now, if we come to manual, you have full control, all right? Full control of your shutter speed, full control of your aperture, all right? And if you want, full control, full control of your ISO. Again, you can have it, an auto ISO, preset those diameters, okay? And uh, it's gonna make that calculation for you. 
I shoot manual with auto ISO all the time. It makes it easier, okay? <laughs> um, and sometimes I choose my own ISO. Guys, it, again, it's, it's what suits you as a photographer. So don't, don't get wrapped up in some of this stuff or some people really want to just be like, ah, that's not how you should do it. Really? It's 2023. There's so many different ways to do what we're doing. All right. Who would have thought we'd be in a position where we can record Hollywood movies with a mirrorless camera? Not this mirrorless camera, but a mirrorless camera. So um, I digress. So manual is going to give you full control. Now, if we come into B, that's going to be bulb mode. And this is going to be for a long exposure. One minute, two minute, 12 minute. I'm not sure what you can go up to with your bulb exposure on this particular model. I'll have it listed somewhere here. You know, I want to say it's something ridiculous, like 15 minutes or something like that. I could be mistaken, but again, I'll leave a little thing. Um, but yes, this is for your very, very long exposures. Typical exposure is going to be 30 seconds, but when we need to do longer astrophotography, you know, things of that nature, we're going to be in bulb mode. Now, C1 and C2 are going to be our program modes. Now, when you go through in the menu system and you pick out all your favorite settings for photography, you're in the photography mode over here, and we'll get to that in a second, and you want to save those settings, we're going to save them to C1. And then you pick out a different set of settings for a different style of photography, and you're going to save them to C2. Well, when we want to recall those settings, we'd either just go to C1 or C2. And C1 or C2, you can either choose shutter, aperture, or manual as far as your base on how you're going to make those uh, or control those uh, settings. If we come over here, this is the creative filters. Now, you can choose a creative filter, and you can choose it by the touch screen in the back. Um, you could do monochrome, you could do saturated, desaturated, college ones, and we'll kind of go over those when we get to the back of the screen um, as far as that goes. But this is for JPEG. So if you're shooting raw and you turn on a creative filter, your raw image won't have that creative filter, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a companion JPEG image. So you have your raw to edit, and then that JPEG, and then whatever creative filter you've chosen. Uh, scene, so now you can choose a scene. And again, if you're in scene mode, it's almost like being in the A plus mode, okay? Camera's gonna do everything for you. It's gonna say, oh, you're outdoors. Here's all your settings, have a nice day oh, you're indoors at a party, here's your settings, have a nice day. So again, you're really giving up control when we're in that mode, but if you don't wanna worry about your settings and you just kinda of wanna do the point and shoot route, scene is, scene is where you wanna put it. And again, there's nothing wrong, there's no judgment here, okay? This is a safe place, we're in the tree of trust. <laughs> Name that movie, um, as far as that goes. Now, when we go to A, it's gonna be hybrid auto. Um, so you're going to have some uh, control, but this is going to also create like a, uh, a digital slide movie of your photos, which is kind of cool if that's what you want to do. Again, it's totally up to you, my friends. A lot of these I don't use scene, and again, being a Sony shooter, but still we have the same functionality in a Sony. I don't use you know, scene or creative filters or the auto or anything like that. So I can't speak from a place of experience, but people use these settings. That's why they're there and they do enjoying them. From what I understand, the little uh, hybrid auto little movies that it creates, they're, they're pretty cool. You know, again, it's something I've never used. And then we're back to Auto Plus. Now I will tell you, if you're an Auto Plus or program um, or even FV, okay, and that flexible priority for exposure, and you go into your menu system, you're gonna see a lot of options grayed out, um, just flat out not there. Because again, you've given up control to the camera and so it's not gonna allow you to make any changes. So if you're going through your menu system and you can't find something, that's why, okay? Um, go into manual mode and then the entire menu system will be opened up for you. So now if we come over here, we're gonna see this little icon. I don't wanna kinda of get in the way of it there. This is for photo and that's for video. And it's simple, switch, boom, all right? And then boom, we're back to photo. It's nice because now there is no lag. We're on older Canon R cameras. There was a bit of a lag for that switch over. So I'm really happy to see that they've improved that um, as far as the lag goes. So now we're gonna go ahead and close up this lens here. Oh, I guess I have to have it a little bit open so we can see the back screen. Now, hopefully you guys can see the back screen okay and it's not completely blown out, all right? 
we can come up, we have our display right here, and we can customize this display too as we see fit. But this is a touch screen, so if we touch here, we can change our shutter speed, okay? And we can do that with this back dial, as you can see I'm doing right now, all right? If I touch here, I can change my aperture, and I can change this with the top dial, as you can see what I'm doing right there, as far as that goes. And then, of course, we can change that. We're on auto ISO right now, so I could touch that, and now I can either change my ISO value, or I can go back to auto, all right? This is moving around to where I want my focus to be, okay? Now, it's focus only, not focus and shoot, um, because I don't like it to focus and shoot, but I do like having the uh, ability, if I want to touch the screen really quick, to change that point of focus, all right? This tells me that I'm in manual mode. This is my battery indicator. I have no card in the camera, okay? And now I can go to Q, and here's my Q menu. And this is really great because now I have access to the type of autofocus, okay? The autofocusing mode, I should say what kind of autofocus I'm doing. I'm in RAW, I'm in high plus, while well, I'm RAW plus JPEG, I'm in high um, plus mode, you know. I've got my different focusing modes down here. I know it's kind of timing out really quick. Get my different focusing modes down here. I can choose my creative styles, my creative filters if I want them on or off. Um, you know, I've got my auto white balance. I've got my picture style, which is standard. And then we can go right back out to, to where we were as far as that goes. Now, <clears throat> if we look at the rest of the buttons on the back, we have our menu. And by pressing this, I'm going to go directly into my menu system. Okay. Here is going to be, um, you can actually program this one, the asterisk one. Um, this is going to be your autofocus on and off. And so this is actually going to, you can hold that. And you can actually set this up for back button focus as well. Um, and you can also set this up for exposure lock if you'd like to. So this one you can customize a few different ways. If we were going to um, look at the back of, or look at an image, we would hit this button, okay, and that's gonna magnify. And by hitting it, we're now in manual or manual function autofocus. And this just basically, this tells us where we're at, okay? And so it highlights everything that we can do there. We have our info, and this is gonna give us our full range of info on the camera, okay, on the back screen. We can have as much as you can see as I cycle through that, or as little as I want, all right? Here's a very, a very analytical view of that, okay? And then we can go back here. So whichever one suits you best is the one you choose. Again, there's no right or wrong answer there. Here is the hard button for our cue menu, okay? And again, we can choose through here and then just select a little different, you know, using the touch screen. And there's our auto-focusing modes. And again, we can choose the different type of, here's our subject detection, Swervo, or we can use the hard button, okay? So it just depends on what you want to do. We have no card in the camera, so the playback button won't work. And here is to trash photos if we were going to trash them. And then of course, we have um, our D-pad, our control pad, and this is gonna give us different functionality depending on what we're trying to choose. Again, if we're choosing one of the different modes or aspect ratio, we can kinda scroll through here, scroll through the side, and then we're gonna use the side buttons to choose as far as that goes. Oop, I set that one, we're gonna go back there. <laughs> Um, but yes, that's going to give you the ability to move the cursor without using um, the touch screen. All right. Again, that's just kind of one of those things you have to choose uh, or it's going to function depending on how you're using it or what mode you're in. So if I was in menu mode here, you could see I'm going, I'm scrolling across and I'm going up and down. Okay. So again, depending on what you're doing is how that's actually going to function. So, and then this right here is actually going to be the microphone, the internal microphone that you can use to record. And here is going to be your diopter. And I hope you guys can see that well. 
all right? And your diopter, you're gonna adjust this to your eye. This is really helpful for people who wear glasses. Now I have readers on, all right? Um, and I don't shoot with my reading glasses on, so I would actually, oh, and my glasses are broke. Look at that. That's good, I'm just gonna set those down right there. Um, <laughs> it happens, casualties, I guess. Um, I would set this diopter to shoot, okay? It's gonna uh, change the way the EVF looks uh, inside as far as that sharpness goes. And then once it's really sharp, kind of the, the, think about the eye doctor. Is this one sharper? Is this one sharper? Is this one clearer? Is this one clearer? That's what the diopter does. You're gonna adjust it until that information inside your EVF, okay, your viewfinder is razor sharp and you leave it alone. Now, if you ever look through the EVF and everything looks blurry, that probably means it's got bumped, okay? So check this. I like Fuji's because Fuji's you have to actually pull out to adjust and then pop back in. Um, most everybody else just has it like this and it can get bumped and you know dislodged and then you just have to readjust it. So, oh, all right, my friends. Well, as far as that goes, um, that is the button tour for the Canon R8. It's, it's very simple, okay? And again, most of these you can remap to do what you wanna do, especially our custom buttons back here on the back. There's a whole section of customization inside the menu. Oh, and we might as well talk about this really quick. Our hot shoe. This camera actually comes with a digital interface hot shoe and Canon has accessories coming out. Um, again, I think it's like the, the R500 or R50 flash or something. I'll have it off here to the side. It's the only flash that'll work with this one because of the new hot shoe. Um, as far as Canon flashes go. Um, but yes, this is a digital interface hot shoe, which is actually really nice. I'm glad Canon started uh, designing that and working it into um, their cameras. So um, it's a great addition. Um, but anyways, as far as the functionality and the, you know, the buttons go, you can customize those and tailor those to your needs, all right, which is great. There's just not a whole lot of them, which is nice. And that's what makes this also a great learning full frame camera, where as we go up, uh, the R6 Mark II, the R5, the R3, there's a plethora, a cornucopia, a festival of buttons on the camera. And so it can be kind of daunting. So learning on a camera like this, learning what those buttons actually do, how you can change the functionality of those buttons to do what you wanted to do is really nice. And then of course, your PASM dial and the different modes that that entails. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and talk about our partner today, Photo Forum. Now Photo Forum has been serving the photography community for over 50 years here in the Valley of the Sun. Phoenix, Arizona, for the people who do not live here in Arizona. Um, and as the last couple years, we have been catering more and more to our videographers. That's right, our local group of videographers and cinematographers is growing and we are proud that we can go ahead and supply them with most of what they need. We're a small, humble store, so it can't be everything, but we do our best. We're a community shop that loves to educate and learn from our customers. We don't know everything. I know I certainly don't. So it's great to have that community and we are at the center of fostering that community with group hikes, group photo walks, group mountain bike rides, and eh? get out of Arizona. Um, it's a whole lot of fun, my friends. Our reps are very interactive with the shop. Canon, Sony, Fuji, our Tamron rep, uh, our small rig rep, our Suray rep. They come all the time, like once a quarter. We have events, it's a lot of fun party in the house. I'm telling you, you guys got to come by. So as far as that goes, there's a link down below for our website. Not that good, but there's a link for our social media that I do and it's really good. So check that out. If you're local, come into the shop. We seriously have people drive down from Flagstaff, the uh, Navajo Nation, down from Douglas and Santa Cruz and Tucson, Sedona, Prescott, Payson, all over the state to come to see us. All right. And we really appreciate that. And that should be a testament of how we run our shop, all right? We're definitely a hands-on, customer-oriented group of people, not, hey, let's just get you a camera and have a nice day. Nope, from start to finish, we wanna watch you uh, grow on your journey, becoming the best photographer or videographer you could possibly be. So, check us out, photo form, links down below. So, and it, at that point, we really got nothing else to talk about, my friends. The Canon R8 is a great entry-level full-frame camera. Again, we have the review and we have the button tour, okay, that I've already posted. If you have any questions as far as the functionality of 
the camera itself as far as customizing any of these functions or uh, features on the buttons, just go ahead and comment down below, all right? I can reach out to the Canon rep. They're gonna give me information if I don't have it offhand, okay? And I'll be sure to get that information directly back through you in the comment section. So had a lot of people do that with a Canon R50 uh, menu tutorial. And my Canon rep, Stacy, she's absolutely amazing. Usually a day's turnaround, hey, I have a, a person who's asking this question. I wanna be sure of the answer, can you help me out? And within like a day, I've got an answer from her or someone else in Canon saying, here's the information for that person. There you go. So it's great. So again, don't be afraid to ask. We're an interactive channel. All right. It's one of the things we love about here. So on that note, like, subscribe, bell notification icon, my friends. It's the trifecta we love so much here at Get Out Arizona. Helps the video, helps the channel. Links down below. Um, photo forum, the Instagram. Eh. <laughs> And I guess the website, but more the Instagram than anything. Um, if you have any questions, you know, follow the link, call the shop, or just ask directly on social media. You'll be talking to me. Um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, the devil's work. It's necessary, though, for Get Out Arizona to spread the word about Get Out Arizona. The group hikes, the group photo walks that we do, um, the group mountain bike rides that we do. It's a lot of fun, guys. It's interactive. Again, building that community, it's what we stand for. The links down below, the other ones are gonna be affiliate links. If you make a qualifying purchase, we receive a small commission, but you're not charged anything additional, and it helps out with coffee money, gas money, and park passes, the other trifecta that we love so much here at Get Out Arizona. So yeah, at that point, my friends, what do we always say? Be kind to yourself and others, be amazing stewards on that trail, and we have to ask, seriously, my friends, what are you waiting for? Get Out Arizona. We'll see you on that next adventure. Take care, everybody, and have a great day.